Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Jordan Levitt to defeat Patty Pimblett. And I'm here to talk about Martin Budai versus Shamil Gaziev. Gaziev is 11 and 0 as a pro. He's got he's 33 years old and he's got one inch of reach over 32 year old Budai who is 13 and 1 as a pro. Martin Budai, he's got one loss and it was to Juan Espino who is one of the greatest what-ifs in MMA history. Guy uh, was an above-average UFC fighter on pure wrestling talent alone. And I'm imagining that's how that fight went. He was out-wrestled, although I haven't seen it, so I couldn't speak to it. But that was very early on in his career, and it's to a guy that I consider a good fighter. My point is, it's a forgivable loss. His 13 wins, Budai, include 9 finishes, 7 by TKO, 2 by submission. And he's also got 4 decisions, 3 of which come in the UFC. I believe. And uh, he's looked good in those decisions. You know, I think one of my last few videos, I called him a slow plotting zombie, who I think was a better version of Josh Parisian. I think I said that. Although I think I say that for like every big heavyweight making his debut. But uh, Martin Budai did impress me in his decision wins just by kind of having better cardio than I expected him to. Against Jake Collier, against Lucas Dreschke, and against Chris Barnett, kind of, even though they didn't go the full 15 minutes. That was a technical decision. But Budai is a guy that, uh, you know, is a big heavyweight that doesn't have a horrible gas tank. And his last fight against Josh Parisian was pretty eye-opening because he steamrolled Josh Parisian, just ripped him to the mat and ripped his arm off with a Kimura. Very impressive. He did it against the cage. Uh, very impressive win for Martin Budai. And my estimation of him as a fighter is pretty high for a heavyweight here. Also, he got that TKO win on the Contender Series over Lorenzo Hood. Uh, got him out of there deep into round one with a knee. That guy's not the best fighter, but he's dangerous. And he did hurt Budai briefly. Uh, caught him with a nice punch and teed off on him for a few seconds. But Budai took it, and uh, uh, Lorenzo Hood couldn't take it back. And uh, here he's fighting Shamil Gaziev. Who uh, Gaziev, who's making his debut here. This guy, he hasn't fought the best competition, but he's certainly done his job and then some. He's 11-0 with 10 finishes, 7 knockouts, 3 submissions. All 3 submissions are rear naked chokes, by the way. And the best of which comes against Greg Velasco, who he got out of there on the Contender Series. That was a, a fight in which he knocked the guy down in seconds, knocked him down, and then somehow fell into back control. The guy ended up taking his back with a sloppy reversal, and then he sloppily reversed it and ended up choking the guy out a minute later. His best win, I guess, is Darko Stosic, who he TKO'd in round one with a beautiful uppercut. Darko's former UFC fighter. Never really made the biggest waves, but still, as far as name value goes, uh, that's uh, the peak of Gazeev's career so far. He also beat this guy, Kirill Kornilov, who's got a good record, seems to be a good fighter. That was a split decision, but he definitely won the fight. He ripped him to the mat repeatedly and uh, neutralized him in the end. I thought he was slowing down a little bit, but he, was, he faced a good amount of danger. The guy put him in a Kimura from the back from the bottom and swept him and almost tapped him, but he kept himself safe. And again, that shouldn't have been a split decision in my opinion. But other than that, he hasn't faced too much adversity. He had one fight against this guy, Gregory Papurava, or whatever, Gregory P. That's a guy that beat him as an amateur. I think he choked him with a rear naked choke as an amateur. I wasn't able to see the amateur fight, but I saw them fight as pros and... It was a tough fight for Shamil, but Shamil got him out of there with a TKO in round two. Toward the end of round one, it looked like he was fatiguing and whatever, getting busted up a little bit. But uh, he was able to outlast the guy and avenged his uh, amateur loss. He does have another amateur loss. It's by decision, but whatever. He didn't rematch him as a pro, so not worth bringing up. But the point is, Shamil's passed every test so far as a pro. He's looked a little sloppy at times, but he's looked forceful. He's looked good everywhere. Above average power, I'd say. A lot of above average size, too. And uh, getting some nice rear naked chokes along the way as well. Three rear naked chokes. There's a lot of promise with Shamil Gaziev, but I got to pick against him. I'm picking against him because I've seen Budai in uh, 
closer competitive fights against guys who are not the best at all in the heavyweight division, but guys who have still been in the UFC heavyweight division. And Budai has outlasted, particularly outlasted them, but also in general outworked them. And of course, he's shown a good bit of danger himself as well. So I uh, wouldn't put it past them to put away Shamil Ghazi if, if there's any holes to be exploited here and exposed. So I'm going with Budai just because I trust uh, what he's shown me. I don't love uh, betting on him because I don't have the firmest grasp on this fight, but minus 150, whatever. Maybe it's worth a stab. Again, uh, it remains to be seen all the traits these guys have as fighters. Even Budai, I don't have the firmest grasp on, but he's shown me enough heart and cardio and uh, also fair bit of danger as well, where I think he's the wiser prediction. So, prediction is Budai wins, late finish or decision. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.